wasn't it? Yes, and yours was a farmer. It actually says right here on this that he was a farmer. It doesn't tell on this one how much he was worth, though. They changed that from year to year. It okay. does um, tell on here, we'll look down at the bottom, that um, your Lula D, which is one of his older children, she has married, and we can tell that because she's listed as a widow on here. And okay. she has moved back in with one of her children. She actually has two children. We don't know where the second one is, but she has moved back home with her parents since her husband has passed away. That's so interesting. And, and the, again, this follows the neighborhood. So if we look down here, we'd see the, the people directly below were neighbors, right. closest neighbors to closest and out and above the same mm -hmm. way. And probably relatives to them. There's, there's no telling at least. And I bet if we went back and um, looked at another census, we would see a lot of these families are still living in the same area. They didn't move around a whole lot back then like we do now every three years. Well, this is wonderful. Now, now, how far back is this on the micro feast that we have that can go back We on? actually have Georgia census back to 1820. Wow, fantastic. But now keep in mind, 1850 is the big changing date. At 1850 forward is when they started listing everybody in the household. Before 1850, 1840, 1830, 1820, they only listed the head of household and then they did a little hash mark telling whether they had boys in the household between say one and five, six and ten. So you don't know the names. Well, did they also track, like we talked about before, whether they had radios or what kind of things they had in the house? And the 1931 they sure did. Okay. And um, depending on what year you're looking at, you will also find out if he fought in a war and they'll tell you what war he fought in. So you can, then you know to look at military records or pension okay. records. And that's a separate that's that a separate can thing. Can that be done within the library or do you have to go somewhere else? Actually, we do not have that, okay. but if it's um, the Georgia Archives, which is down in Morrow, they have a lot of those records, and the National Archives actually share, their, one of their branches shares the same parking lot with the Georgia Archives, okay. so you can just make a day trip out That's of it. That's great. It's actually kind of like, I guess, if you watch those investigative shows on TV, mm -hmm. this kind of hones your investigative skills. You're going back and and looking from generation back to back and branching off from there looking at other sources. So. Oh yes, um, we even had a book, I think we still have a copy of it here. It's a lady who is a private detective in California, so she has her license for that, but she's also a certified genealogist. Her motto was she could find you dead or alive. <laughs> Rhonda, thank you very much. I tell you, this has really been in informative and, and, uh, and, and enjoyable. I, I enjoy history and I know a, a lot of people do, and particularly when you're looking at your family and uh, kind of to understand where you're at, you have to look where you come from. True, very true. And thank you for coming in with us today. Thank you. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. How are it's you today? Good to see you. Good, good to, to see, see you. you too. Let's see if we can find a little bit of chronic family history. Well, I think we can. <laughs> thank you. I think we can. I believe my parents were married in Dawson County, okay. but I do know my uncle Clyde Jr. was married here in Hall. Do you think we could find those records and, and track I, that down? I hope we can. We can look at the indexes and see what we have. Great. Okay? Thank you, Lisa. Lisa, tell me about now the marriage license. Now, that's, now, where would that be located at? Is that where they got married at? Is where they applied for the license? Or how, how would I find that? Okay, the records that we have um, are separated by the indexes. You know, you can find a marriage license by the index, and it's where they apply. Now, if they did okay. not apply in Hall County, we're not going to have the license. Okay, like my mom and dad, I think, were in Dawson County where they applied and got married, yeah, so they wouldn't so be here. They would not be here. Okay. I would check with Dawson County. Okay. Okay. But now the index is here. Now, who are you trying to locate? All right, I do know that my uncle Clyde Jr. and my Aunt Bess were married here in Hall. Okay. So okay. let's see if we can find Let's see if we can find them. Okay, now the direct index is, is the uh, male's name. Okay. And the reverse indexes are the female. So let's okay. just look in the direct index here. Okay. Under. Help you with that. That's a heavy book. Yes, it is. We are we're in good shape around here. <laughs> um, so let's look under chronic. Let me see. Okay. And I would imagine it's somewhere in the 40s. 40s? Uh, would, would be when I okay. think they, they right, most we likely we were married. Let me see. Now give me the full name. Uh, Clyde Chronic Jr. Clyde Chronic Jr. Okay, let's see. There he is. Is that? Let there me see he that. is. There he is. Well, I'll be looking at 1945. Oh, look, look. December the 24th. They got married on Christmas, Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Well, I'll be looking at that. Okay, now Mary if we Beth want. Simpson. Okay. Now, do you want to see the actual license? Yes, please. If it's we recorded. Could. Okay. Here is the book. This will um, give the book and the page number. 
So we're looking at book 12, page... 197. Right here. Sure, I'm two, sorry, 267. 267. 12, 267. Okay, we're going to okay. push this aside. Okay. Now it will be in marriage book 12, which is this one here. If right you here. want to grab that one for us. Okay. Okay. okay page right. 267, I believe, is what we said. And back oh. during this time, they did write everything in. So everything written by hand. Written by hand. So there they are. Get that. December 24th. And that is, gives the Reverend it does Oliver give, Turk. It does give the Reverend, and it does uh -huh. give their ages at the time of the marriage. Both were 21. They did apply December 24th, and they married December 24th. Oh, wow. Okay. So, that was a quick way. It was. Get the it was. Let's, 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 let's do it before Christmas. Day. There you That's go. Right. Let's That's do it before right. Christmas. Well, is there any cost to come in and search these kind of things when you come in as far as for the individual coming in and looking for records? No, there are no costs because our records are public record. So anyone can come in and search our records. Now, if you do want to make copies or anything, just advise one of the clerks okay. and she will be happy to make copies for you. Uh, if you need a certified copy of anything, it is $10 for a certified copy of a marriage license. If you need just a plain copy, it is a dollar. For so I imagine anybody copy. researching would want, I mean, I, I would want copies. You would want copies. Of the things, yes. that, you know, to keep yes. there for keepsakes. Yes. Okay, what other kind of records could I find here? Okay, of course we have estate records. And just like the indexes for the marriage licenses, we have the uh, indexes for um, the estates. And you can... Look up here, look up the deceased person's name. It would refer okay. you to minute books that we have or any other books like your supports, administration. So in, in tracking my ancestors and all, would be a yes. great place to look there Just also. start here. Start here with indexes. Okay. And Lisa, you mentioned the, the deed room is where I'd need to go to if I wanted to check history on property and things right. like that. Right. Right. Just across the courtyard from here is the deed record room. Well, great. I want to thank you so much well, thank you. For, for showing thank me you. around, assisting me with this, and I appreciate the copies we're getting. And yes. Again, thank you so much for your time this morning. You're very welcome. And if we can do anything else for you, just come back and see us, okay? Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Cheryl. How are you this morning? Well, good morning. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Listen, I know that uh, we gave some phone calls and you were going to do some special favors for this morning for the sake of this program and do a little research for me. Now, we're trying to learn a little bit about my family history. Can you tell me what you found and how we can go about looking for it when we're in here? Okay, well, I've had been looking up some stuff. I uh, wanted to let you know that our record started 1819 to forward to current. Um, we filed everything by year and by name, by grantor or grantee, your grantor being your person who gave it. Now that's land type.